Welcome back, everyone. This week, we're going to be talking about Grown Rogue, ticker symbol G-R-U-S-F. We're going to talk about the multi-bagger potential that it has. So with that said, let's get into this. The link to this article will be in the description below. So keep that in mind if you want to go over there, read it for yourself. So here we go. Today's piece is an attempt at answering the question of how people get to the blow sorts of numbers and to find out if they're accurate or lofty. Disclaimer, due to the recent rally in Grown Rogue, the stock multiples in this article won't be in line with today's multiples. The bulk of this was written a couple of weeks ago when Grown Rogue was trading at 48 cents a share. Currently, it's at 66 cents a share. So... Keep that in mind. So let's go over a few of these tweets and publications that people have said with their projections. Aaron Edelheit said, Since no one covers Grown Rogue, here is my best estimate of what Grown Rogue could do in 2025. Approximately $40 million of EBITDA. I now believe that Grown Rogue has the opportunity to hit a billion dollar market cap. Do your own due diligence and know that I'm biased as one of the largest holders, end quote. Now, that $40 million of EBITDA might not sound impressive, but keep in mind that in 2023, they did roughly $7 million of EBITDA. Toff Cap. I've been looking again at the cannabis space after a few years, and I was surprised to see many small caps moving in the right direction, both in earnings generation and share price. Example, Grown Rogue, a stock, still has a multi-bagger potential. The stock has clearly done well, but so have earnings. Operations in core markets, Michigan and Oregon, have been scaling, and the group generated roughly 5 million EBITDA in fiscal year 23. 7.6 million adjusted. That's the figure I provided a moment ago when I said EBITDA, and I should have said adjusted EBITDA. Up from the 1.7 million in fiscal year 2022. I estimate more than 20% growth over this year for the core regions. Grown Rogue is also ramping up in New Jersey, with construction nearing completion and on track to be completed in Q2 2024, with sales expected in Q3 2024. And yesterday, they announced an, an entry in Illinois. Construction is expected to be completed in first half of 2025, with first harvest to be completed in second half of 2025. Playing around with some production numbers, price some production multiples and price numbers, and it's not inconceivable to guesstimate additional 25 to 40 million in EBITDA. Yet again, that's with the backdrop of them currently doing five to seven million, let's just call it, between EBITDA and adjusted EBITDA. And finally, from Howard Penny, well, I'll just say that, that he says that this West Coast craft cultivar has significant upside. All right, these are the claims people are making with more abstract dollar figures. So then the question becomes, how are they getting to those dollar figures? Now we'll get to that, but before I do, as always, I have other things to say. If you're unfamiliar with Grown Rogue, just know this, their current adjusted EBITDA is $7.6 million which is to say that some people, including myself, are expecting them to roughly triple or quadruple their adjusted EBITDA in the next two years. That's what makes this a potential amazing opportunity. They've already demonstrated their capacity to carry out strong growth over the last three years, which is to say that the future is more along the lines of a continuum of the past and not just wishful thinking based upon empty promises, as often is the case with management teams in this industry or within the broader financial community. The below image is from their last corporate presentation. Link in the article, and the article's link is in the description if you want to go click on it and view it yourself. These numbers might look small, and they are, but so what? Your returns as a shareholder come from the delta between price and value. Shareholder returns are measured on a percentage basis, meaning that a company growing EBITDA from 1 billion to 2 billion has the same growth as a company going from 7 million to 14 million, 100%. What I'm trying to say is don't be a micro cap bigot 
and instead judge a company based upon the content of its character and not the market cap of the company. Grown Rogue Grown Rogue is a cannabis operator operating in a few states. Let's do a quick overview of their state operations and see how that can help us understand what they plan on doing in the upcoming states in the future. There's, they started off in Oregon. Anybody who knows anything knows that Oregon is a shit show. But guess what? It's a shit show that Grown Rogue has been able to be profitable in. They then moved on to Michigan. Michigan is where their more established model of business has first revealed itself. That model is the following. They're building approximately 50,000 square foot facilities with roughly 15,000 square feet of flowering bench space to grow roughly 10 to 12,000 pounds a year. That's their template, that's what's working, so that's what they're doing. In all fairness, Oregon has a similar model but divided between two facilities. Between those two facilities is roughly 47,000 square feet with 14,700 square feet of flowering bench space that's putting out roughly 10,500 pounds. Michigan was a fresh start. It's a 50,000 square foot indoor facility with approximately 14,550 square feet of flowering bench space that produces approximately 10,000 pounds a year. The future. That's, that's where we were. Now where are we going? Where things are going is why I'm invested in Grown Rogue. New Jersey. There was a news release on October 4th, 2023. New Jersey will be, you guessed it, a 50,000 square foot facility with approximately 17,000 square feet of flowering bench space and is expected to produce 12,000 pounds a year. I'm not going to read these screenshots. It's just proof, I guess, of what I'm saying and trying to sum up here. Illinois. News release on March 5th, 2024. Yet again, a 50,000 square foot facility with up to 14,000 square feet of canopy cultivation flowering bench space. They didn't give a pound range, but I'll go ahead and assign it 10,000 pounds annually. Actually, I thought they did say it, but that's okay. On to the math portion of today's piece. Math. The simple math, the simplest math I can come up with is the following. Illinois is going to make 10,000 pounds. That's $10 million of adjusted EBITDA at $1,000 cost of production, selling for $2,000 a pound. New Jersey is going to make 12,000 pounds. That's $12 million of adjusted EBITDA at $1,000 cost of production, selling for $2,000 a pound. Plus, their Oregon and Michigan locations are making $7.6 million of adjusted EBITDA. So, when Illinois and New Jersey gets built out, they will be making $29.6 million in adjusted EBITDA. So, let's call that year-end 2025 to the beginning of first half of 2026, they will be making $29.6 million in adjusted EBITDA. Remember, they're currently making 7.6 million in adjusted EBITDA. Now, there's assumptions in this modeling, like their cost of production will increase and what pounds are selling for in those markets will fall. Now, you can plug and play, but that's the simplest model I can come up with and it's and in a moment we're going to get into different examples and different ways to come up with assumptions. Because those tweets provided us with ranges from 20, 25 million to 40 million. So, with that said, I digress. Let's get back to reading the article. The above math assumes prices fall in those respective states and that Grown Rogue's production costs go up. Presuming the above, they'll still increase adjusted EBITDA by 4x or 300%. Now, let's play around with the numbers and dive deeper into the details for a fuller spectrum of possible and probable outcomes. In 2023, Grown Road produced 30,000 pounds. By late 2024 or early 2025, they'll be producing roughly 40,000 pounds. By the end of 2025 or early 2026, they'll be producing roughly 50,000 pounds. Within two years time, they'll be producing an extra 20,000 pounds or 66% more 
of their product. But here's where things get crazy. They're accustomed to selling in states where wholesale prices are 900 ish per pound. New Jersey is selling at 3,500 a pound, and Illinois is selling at 2,500 a pound. Grown Rogue's cost per pound, including corporate, is roughly six to seven hundred dollars a pound. And those numbers line up because if they do, if they make two hundred dollars in EBITDA or adjusted EBITDA, and they sold thirty thousand pounds, then that's six million dollars. Now, you might notice I'm saying a lot of roughlies and approximately's, and that's because it's not exact. And if you need to be exact in your calculations, then you probably don't have enough margin of safety. And, well, I want margin of safety. You have to understand that the 7.6 million that they have in adjusted EBITDA in 2023 is the consequence of producing pounds for roughly six to $700 and selling them for roughly $900. What do you think will happen to their adjusted EBITDA and other financial metrics when they can start selling those same pounds for 25 to $3,500 a pound? That's an extra $1,800 to $2,800 per pound and it largely goes to adjusted EBITDA. A reasonable person would push back and say that prices will normalize in the future and fair enough. Also, let's not forget that G&A will grow and that they'll probably won't be dialed in on day one. Let's look at a few examples to create a range of potential plausible outcomes. Ah, uh, this is going to get very numbery, so either pay attention or tune out for the next couple of minutes. Example one, if they maintain costs at $700 a pound and both states fall to $1,500 a pound, that's an extra 20,000 pounds multiplied by $800 of additional adjusted EBITDA that they're currently aren't making. So 22,000 pounds times $800 is $17.6 million. Then add the money that they're making from Oregon and Michigan, $7.6 million, and they'll be making roughly $25.2 million in adjusted EBITDA. <clears throat> That's a 330% increase by the end of 2025 to the midpoint of 2026. Their current market cap, and by current, I mean a couple of weeks ago, for the OTC traded one, their current market cap is, in dollar terms, $82 million. They're currently trading at 10.8 times adjusted EBITDA. Under the conditions I just put forth on a two-year time horizon, they're trading at a 3.3 times adjusted EBITDA. <clears throat> Example two, there's a massive range of outcomes. Perhaps it'll start costing them $1,000 per pound to produce. And maybe prices fall to $2,000 per pound and not $1,500. Now they're making $29.6 million in adjusted EBITDA. This would put them trading at 2.8 times end of 2025 to midpoint 2026 adjusted EBITDA. And I doubt that prices in New Jersey will fall that rapidly. And since New Jersey is the state that they're already building out in, I'd imagine that they'll capture prices with a three handle for at least some period of time. And the final example, example three, but there's also no need to look so far out in the future. If we assume that they only get three months of production out of New Jersey this year due to them being in phase one of their build out, then that still gives us 1800 pounds of New Jersey product if New Jersey keeps their prices elevated at $3,500 a pound until the end of the year, then Grown Rogue at a production cost of $800 a pound will get $4.86 million in adjusted EBITDA out of New Jersey this year. And that's only with one quarter of phase one production. In one of those screenshots above, you'll, you'll see that New Jersey is going to open up with two phases. Phase one, which is going to produce less pounds, and then they're going to ramp up get things dialed in to phase two in which maximum production will occur. So that's a surreal figure and thus why it's not my base case. It's almost too good to be true. Remember, their 2023 adjusted EBITDA is $7.6 million. For them to make an additional $4.86 million means that they'll grow their adjusted EBITDA 64% in 2024. This puts it trading at 2024 year in multiple of 6.58 times adjusted EBITDA. 
No matter how I do the arithmetic, it seems cheap. Now, in all fairness, that's because I'm doing multiples with adjusted EBITDA. The reason adjusted EBITDA is so prevalent, in part, is to fool the gullible and complicit masses into believing something that isn't true, that a stock is cheap. Let's look at it from a cash from operations standpoint. We can split, so you'll see here year 2023, they had 7.6 million in adjusted EBITDA and their cash from operations as a percentage of adjusted EBITDA was 75%. And then in 2022, their adjusted EBITDA was $5.1 million and the cash from operations as a percent of adjusted EBITDA was 40%. So with that said, we can split the difference and say the cash flow from operations is 57.5% of adjusted EBITDA. I know, I know, a sample size of two isn't a great confidence creator. I did all the following figures using market cap instead of EV, enterprise value. Thankfully, they're closely one and the same. I didn't mean to do this, but I did nonetheless, so my apologies. Like I said, it doesn't really change the figures. They're currently trading at a cash flow to market cap of 14.4 times. In my first example of $800 increased margins, cash flow from operations is $13.57 million, or said differently, they're trading at six times cash flow to the market cap. In my second example of $1,000 increased margins, they're trading at uh, 5.2 times cash flow to market cap. Using the example, not currently, but if that example plays out, then you could say that they're currently trading at a 5.2 times cash flow to the projection in the example. In the third example, only looking out to the end of 2024, Grown Road will be making 12.46 million in adjusted EBITDA, which equate, equates to cash flow of operations of 7.16 million, or put differently, trading at an 11.87 times cash flow to market cap. This is all to say that even on a cash from operations basis, it's still cheap, just not ridiculously cheap. Grown Rogue has a higher EBITDA to cash flow conversion ratio than many other MSOs. The reason I noted this was because it's foolish to think that EBITDA converts to cash flow. You could say they're the same difference, and in a lot of companies, they are close enough, but in this industry, not so much. In conclusion, you can plug in and play the numbers for yourself. Notice I didn't assume that prices stay the same in New Jersey or Illinois, i.e. the $3,500 and $2,500. If that does happen for some reason, then the cheapness of this stock can't be overstated. With that said, I thought I'd put some numbers to the tweets to help both of us understand the opportunity that Grown Rogue is providing us. Or should I say, the opportunity that we provide ourselves by being perspicacious. So, what makes this opportunity remarkable? Number one, competent management team. Now, let me make a little disclaimer there with that word, competent. Because well, when, a well, well, when a criterion is based upon adjectives, it's bound to be ambiguous. See, such a simple statement as competent management team won't mean much to most people since many people have become dazzled and baffled by the bullshit of so-called tier one C-suite executives for such a long time and they've inadvertently become sycophants and entangled in parasocial relationships. And what that means is that they can't actually differentiate, differentiate between competent and incompetent management teams because, well, they're in a parasocial relationship and they're sycophants. That's, that's why. Number two, profitability. They're actually profitable. That's kind of self-explanatory. Well, profitable on a net income basis, historically, not every quarter, not all the time, but relatively more so than many others. And that's worth something, but not enough. Number three, added bonus, above average margins. Even when prices settle out and normalize in Illinois and New Jersey, their mar Grown Rogue's margins will be superior to Oregon's and Michigan's margins. 
as well as much of their competition's margins. And the real reason for why I'm involved is the combination of base effects and higher margins is a torque multiplier for the results we'll see in the next couple of years. These above features are unique to Grown Rogue because most cannabis companies decided to be bulls in a china shop, wrecking havoc in an attempt to generate returns below their cost of capital. So not only is Grown Rogue a good bet in the absolute sense and individual sense, but also on a relative comparative level. P.S. This space is full of people predicting lunatic growth forecasts. Normally, their thesis is predicated on some sort of legislation change. That's what makes this story different. The grown rogue story is one that predicts lunatic growth forecasts under current market conditions. And it just so happens that the lunatic prediction isn't too crazy if you understand the numbers. When it comes to this industry, most investors have either swallowed the growth story hook, line, and sinker without any consideration to the underlying arithmetic, or they've become so desensitized to things and they're in a state of learned helplessness and now they need to see it before they'll believe it. The problem with seeing it before they believe it is that they're waiting for price to confirm narrative. And we've touched upon that problem of many people before. The problem with Wanting price to confirm narrative is that once that occurs, the money will have already been made. Since most people are enumerate, they can't differentiate between fact and fiction. They predominantly rely on the narrative. This means that they can't actually differentiate between hopes and dreams forecasting versus actual fundamental growth. Most MSOs need legislative change to rapidly grow, while Grown Rogue only needs to continue with business as usual. People's predisposition to focus on the high-level overview of this industry instead of the detailed intricacies of the individual companies is in part what's causing people to miss this opportunity. Notice how I didn't factor in 280E rescheduling or interstate commerce? They have outdoor farms in Oregon that can most definitely benefit from interstate commerce. How would that change their numbers? Hint, up and to the right. Here's Obi Strickler saying for himself, don't forget our location in the Rogue Valley, best outdoor on the planet. We are very well hedged to win on both sides of regulations as we could quickly scale to over 100,000 pounds of high quality, low cost outdoor. The difference between Grown Rogue and most other companies in this industry isn't in the narrative, but the numbers. <clears throat> it's the continuity and alignment between speech and behavior of the management team, which I find attractive. They're not just talking the talk, they're walking the walk. A point of mine is that we all need to do, a point of mine is that all we need to do is bet on what's coming and not what we want to come or what we think should come. I'm taking a praxeological stance, not an ideological one. They merely need to continue business as usual in order to do well while many others' futures are dependent on home, hopes, dreams, and what might be. Well, the last half decade has demonstrated what kinds of returns you get when your investing thesis is based on ideology and ignorance. Grown Rogue is offering these blind ideologues an opportunity to make money for once while maintaining their cherished narratives and yet so many are turning them down and turning a blind eye. I'll let you figure out the reasons for why. Here's a screenshot of what I'm talking about. Uh, Aaron Edelheit posted a Bingle Capital fund quarterly uh, letter and said something like, if you're invested in this sector, you need to read this letter. And I absolutely agree with that statement. And here was one of the responses. No thanks. If I have learnt any lessons in this space, don't buy the small fish. Sure, you could have outsized returns, but they could also just as easily go under." End quote. Now, 
If you're familiar with my work, then you should be able to identify multiple logical fallacies in that statement. And if not, then maybe you should go read and listen to my other work. If you still don't get it, a picture is worth a thousand words. Most MSOs suffer from what's known as etiolation in the plant community. Here's most MSOs. Fast and weak growth that's prone to rot, disease, and collapse. While here you have grown rogue. Rock solid framework ascending to the heavens. Disclaimer. My numbers might be off, but guess what? Even if they are off, they're directionally accurate, and the growth that they're going to experience is so much so that even if I miss the moon, I'll land among the stars. You might recognize that as the phrase, margin of safety. Disclaimer, I'm long grown rogue. Cup of Coffee Capital is a reader-supported publication. To receive my new posts and support my work, consider becoming a free or paid subscriber. Thank you for watching and listening, and until next time.